Good morning. Welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. This morning, over a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of water, a glass of juice, whatever you prefer, we are going to go on a garden tour. Um, it's probably like eight something in the morning. I got up early um, because I do live in an urban setting um, and this video was supposed to come out yesterday <laughs> But I have neighbors and so I didn't get it done, but we're gonna go through the garden today I'm gonna show you the fall garden. There's still some summer left. My first frost is Urban noises <laughs> My first frost is like the beginning of November, so I still have summer things in here. But I have gotten the fall garden underway, and I want to show you. Um, and I'm going to do the garden tour a little bit different, a little bit different, and I hope I can kind of remember. I'm going to go through the garden from where I started and where it is now. And I hope I can remember, like, how I set it up, what came first. I, I know, like, the first three beds that came... Um, but I'm just gonna kind of explain it as we go through the tour because a few people have asked about how I set the garden up, about like how I designed it. And honest truth, I did not. <laughs> like I had this space, I started putting things down. They don't know why I came to record over here by them. People have been saying we wanna see the chickens more in the video. So that's why I came over here. They're just hollering. They waiting for me to give them treats and stuff. <laughs> but anywho, um, people have asked. So I'm gonna try to take you through the garden tour today, but also show you like where I started and like where it ended is, is like where it is now. So we're gonna see if I can do that. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, I'm hoping that it turns out the way that I expect it to. So we will see. <laughs> when I first started my garden, I had one cinder block bed. Um, it was not the size that it is right now. It was much smaller. And you see where that pool is that annoys me, that annoys some of you? <laughs> That's where this bed was. Um, and so that tree shaded the garden for a good portion of the day and also the tree over here, shaded the garden. So if you are thinking about doing a garden, I always say, check your sun. Um, the reason why I say that is because my original garden bed was sitting in a spot that did not get a good amount of sun. Um, and so we had some kind of, you know, luck, a little bit of luck. And that was years before 2020. It was just something for me and my daughter to do together. Um, and then, like once we planted the second and third year and the trees were getting bigger we weren't getting good harvest um and so we still planted every year so i ended up moving it and so my first garden my first garden bed and now she's just gonna holler give me one minute and until she's done <laughs> So this was our first bed. Um, there were no trellises on either side. This was literally the one bed that we had. I had like some lattice in the back and then I had put like strings to hold cucumbers up. There were tomatoes in the back, there were cucumbers, then there were other things in the middle. It was literally my worst garden season ever. <laughs> <laughs> but thankfully I started out with one bed and realized like oh my goodness now the camera is foggy y'all so yeah worst garden season ever good thing was I started with one garden bed um, thing is even though it was my worst season ever I was like I'm gonna add this bed to <laughs> and then after that I was like this was before I ever grew again in them I'm gonna go add this garden bed. So um, that's how the garden started. There was one bed here. I added this bed and then I added that bed. No trellising whatsoever at that point. Okay, let's talk about what's in these beds right now and then we'll continue to move through with how I started my garden and the garden tour. So someone asked me, how do I know what's in the beds because I don't have any tags out? There are a few tags in here, but at this point, I kind of know what the vegetables look like. I also remember what I planted, um, so that's how I know. <laughs> um, in the front, these first six plants are kohlrabi, um, and the animals are definitely eating. 
they are eating but if you see it's also growing back if you see right here like it's still growing back they are definitely eating it's not animals it's those little worms someone told me not to squish in the last uh, video I am going to squish them <laughs> um, I'm not going to spray because that can affect other pollinators but the ones that are eating my plants I am going to squish them it's just what I'm going to do <laughs> <laughs> so we have kohlrabi here um, these are cabbages and they're growing pretty nicely minus the pest pressure but they'll be just fine the middle is still growing um, these are collards this is broccoli and in the back we have kale and so everything is growing nicely um, like I said there is pest pressure right now um, but the pest will go away soon and right now I'm literally just squishing them I'm not spraying anything anything like that I'm just I'm just squishing them <laughs> the only plants that I'm worried about the pests getting the middle of is like my broccoli I said it in the last video the leafy greens there they will grow back um, as long as you know like they haven't eaten the whole stem down but even just if you leave the stem in the ground that plant will grow back so I just don't worry too much about that um, I'm sure there's a difference of opinion on that but in my garden I don't worry about it <laughs> so there are beets and I went through and thinned those yesterday I thinned it down to three in one spot and so we'll see what how that works you know I'm not well I have not successfully grown a beet yet and every year I still plant them <laughs> in the second garden bed right now we still have leeks everyone kind of said just leave the leeks let them go let them um, get not everyone but a lot of people said leave them leave the leeks let them go some people said make sure they stay moist um, some people said you know let them go to the first frost so that's what I'm gonna do um, over here if you remember we had three <laughs> Swiss chard. We're down to one right now. We're down to one Swiss chard right now, but I have Swiss chard planted somewhere else and I'm going to move it over here so we can have three again. Um, we have some more kohlrabi. All over here is broccoli. And so that's growing really well. Um, right here we have a Georgia collard and back here we have cabbages. If you remember, we planted some dinosaur kale over there and the seeds have started to germinate. So we are going to let them grow um, to a decent size and then we're going to separate them and plant them throughout the garden and other places. I thought the other day, oh my goodness, I still have sweet potatoes over there and I won't have anything to put there once I harvest them. But I will I have the dinosaur kale and honestly I could like take them up now as small as they are and put them into some sale trays to let them finish growing but I'm just gonna let nature do it y'all I'm, I'm tired <laughs> like I, I am very much tired I don't want to be ba babying any plants now I wasn't able to find any snapdragons just yet um, so I'm gonna give that a little bit of time if I can't find them I am gonna start some indoors I am going to start some indoors because I do want my snapdragons. I did find some pansies yesterday at my local feed and seed store. So that's four. Uh, the sale trays are four. I don't remember how many I got. So yes, I do. There's four, four, four. So 12 um, actual trays of four for $20. So not bad at all. We're going to fix up this flower bed that looks a whole entire mess right now. And then we're going to plant those out that will be another video <laughs> all right so let's move on to the third bed that I put into the garden and that's the middle block bed um, the longer middle block bed and oh okay so just so you know these beds are four by seven both of these are four by seven so four long well four across seven long this bed is two across and seven long so yeah um, this is where all my root vegetables are as you can see the parsnips have not come up someone said it takes a while for them to germinate so like I'm gonna give them about a month but if they never come up this will be a spot for the dinosaur kale so also you will notice we have 
radishes growing. So we thinned these together last week. And some of the carrot seeds that we planted are also coming up. Um, the radishes are looking good. This garden is shaded for a good amount. Well, this bed, like this section, is shaded for a good amount of the day. Uh, but it's growing, doing really well. And the pretty little nasturtium that volunteered. Not going to get any pretty flowers out of it, I'm sure. There's another volunteer back there. I love when plants volunteer in my garden. Um, so, like... It's literally a free plant. Like, what do you, why would you not want them to volunteer? <laughs> it's a free plant that you didn't plant. If we were in like spring, those nasturtiums would grow and they would be beautiful. Um, and I'm sure there are other seeds that fail. So I do believe I'll probably get more nasturtiums next year. Um, so yeah, I love when a plant volunteers in my guy. <laughs> So you know we planted onion seeds in all of the brick holes. They have not come up yet, but there is signs of life. I'm excited. <laughs> and if they don't come up, I have no one to blame but myself. I planted them before I went on my birthday trip, before I took my daughter on her trip. Um, and so I wasn't here to keep it wet. Well, moist. And my son did turn the sprinkler on, but he was like, I did it for about 15 minutes. It was like, no! <laughs> So, um, you know, it is what it is. If I can't, if they don't germinate, then I'll just start some inside. Go ahead and put them out. They are going to overwinter anyway. Like, I wasn't going to get any onions before the, um, before the, the winter got here. So, I'm not pressed about that. <laughs> so, the next thing I think that I did was blueberry bushes. Not this many, though. I only had three. And I actually had one right here that was in the walkway and we moved it over there. Um, but then eventually I just went and got more and put them all in this front section. And they've been working just fine um, because, you know, they like acidic soil. And so having them in this little, it, it's literally, it may be a foot and a half, um, the length of, of it and the bed I'm not really sure well the bed must be a little over seven because this is seven and then this spans the front and then there's one more so maybe eight so maybe so there's a foot and a half space here and then the whole thing is eight and you saw my blueberry harvest this year you don't have to have a lot of space like I'm, I'm so serious I want people to understand that um, because you can grow a lot of things in your backyard that someone said you need this big amount of space for and you don't there are what one two three four five there are five blueberry bushes right here and every last one of them produces blueberries for me um, in this what one and a half by eight foot space so just remember that <laughs> i believe my next two beds were these two so this one here and the asparagus area so basically what i did was like look like every time i wanted to expand i just looked and i didn't think about the space that was there i didn't think about the square footage i just put a bed in and so um, the blueberry bushes are in ground like there was no no dig going on they are just in ground and I covered them I think the first time I did it I covered them with wood chips that I went and got from my um, local dump and people do say and it is probably true you know that the local dump maybe is sprayed this that and the third it is probably true I didn't have a problem with it I'm not telling anybody to go to their local dump and get wood chips i'm just telling you that that's what i did um and then after that i stopped covering them at all like i didn't cover the roots at all i fertilize them every year with holly tone to make the soil a little more acidic that's pretty much all that i do to the blueberry bushes okay so this bed i think is what two feet and then let me count the plants so i could tell you one two three four five six seven okay two by seven maybe two and a half because it's a little bit longer but it comes out to this grassy spot where where i'm gonna put some more weed barrier but just so you can see uh we have kale in here this is a red kale 
This kale back here got eaten down, but there are leaves in the middle, so I'm gonna give that some time. It got eaten down pretty bad. Um, the rest of this is collards, I believe. This may be kale, um, but it's between collards and kale in this bed. And then we went through and planted some lettuce. And so that's starting to come up as well. It is a lot of lettuce in here. <laughs> right here, I didn't get good germination, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm gonna give it a little more time and then I may come back through and plant again. Um, but this bed isn't looking that bad except for the ones in the back for some reason like look at this one <laughs> that was a volunteer so i'm not worried about it anyway but the ones in the back are getting eaten up pretty bad but of course if you know me like i think you know me you know i'm just gonna leave it and see what happens um like i said having the dinosaur kale is a good backup because it is starting to grow so if anything in here just like is not gonna grow like that that volunteer which wasn't supposed to be there anyway. Um, but if there are other things, I'll just use the dinosaur kale in place of it. And those are the dinosaur kale seeds that we planted over here. They are also coming up. Um, this is a broccoli. I noticed that I had two broccolis growing in one spot from the store. Um, and so I just stuck it in there a few days ago. So it's still trying to get acclimated. We'll see what happens. Okay, so after I added those beds, I believe at the same time I added these right here and the beds over there. So let's take a look at what's in there. <laughs> of course, strawberries are always going to be here unless I move them because they are perennial. They are giving flowers, which is odd. <laughs> and I do not know, I do not know what kind of strawberries they are because I started them from some strawberries that I got from the store. Um, and someone a while ago asked me to show how I do that. And I will, now that the season is coming down, you know, to an end and I'll be in the house, I'll be doing a little more videos inside, like seed starting, things like that. Um, but yes, I started those from a store brought strawberry. I have no idea what kind of strawberries they are. But I do know is they're delicious when they, uh, come ready for harvest <laughs> so this bed is probably three or four feet long two inches a little over two inches wide um, and so we have collards in here as well I believe it's collards could be kale um, let me see no it's collards Georgia collards um, that's in here and then there's two cabbages over here and this is a volunteer basil there are beets in here I did not I did not thin these yet. I need to come and thin these. I forgot all about these yesterday. Um, and then there's nasturtiums that volunteered all through here as well. <laughs> I had nasturtiums in there in the summer. So, you know, cool with me. <laughs> so the next beds that I put in was this one here, which right now has sweet potatoes. And if you saw my community post yesterday, you know I got nosy and started digging. <laughs> <laughs> but they are growing um, right now. There are collards down here. It is possible that I'm going to move them. Um, we will see once I take the beans out how they do because right now they are shaded for most of the day, which is why they are so much smaller than everything else. These are the beans that overgrew. Someone did say, why don't you just cook those up? Because I don't like stringy beans and I don't like beans with really big beans inside. <laughs> So if I'm lucky, I will get some, um, I'll get some volunteer beans next year for those, from those, and then I don't have to plant beans, but I, I will not be eating those. <laughs> um, and then I put this bed in as well. Um, so this has some Swiss chard where I said I was going to move some of the Swiss chard. I'm going to move some of these, at least two of them, over into the bed over there that has the leeks um, because... They're getting shaded as well. Um, this whole little side is shaded. Um, so we have some more collards over here. And then, yay, the artichokes are growing back. So like I said, artichokes do like cooler temperatures. And so they looked really bad all summer long, but now they're looking beautiful again. If I am lucky, 
I will get some artichokes off of those um, next year. They've probably been in it for two years, I'm thinking. They weren't in my first year. And so next year, that'll be, I think I put them in my second year and I started them from seed. I just can't remember how long they've been in here. So the bed over there with the strawberries and then the extra planting space. This bed right here, and I don't know the size of it. I originally had beds over here, um, and then I decided to just put a planting space right here. And then the bed over here, of course, and this bed right here. These all, I'm sure, came at the same time. Um, and so like right now, this has kohlrabi in the front, Swiss chard right here, collards. Yeah, these are Morris heading collards. And then this is broccoli back there. And then two cabbages and the roselle or sorrel, cause I know it's called different things in different areas. My package here said roselle, so that's what I call it. But I think in um, maybe in the Caribbean area, it's called sorrel. Um, but it's still doing amazingly. There's so many like flower pods on there. Like, yeah, it's it's beautiful. I can I, like this will always grow in my garden. It is so pretty. It does not seem to need a lot of care. Um, this area is a bit shaded. My garden dried out a lot over the summer and it just kept going. And I had two more in the cinder block beds and someone had asked like, why are you pulling it? Clearly it's still growing because I needed the space. <laughs> and then there's another one over here in this bed too. I always forget to show it, but it's over here living its life too. That's the sweet potatoes, beans, and then the sorrel or roselle is right here. Okay, so what did I do next? I feel like, I feel like I did the, um, orchard area next and so with the orchard area i literally just started planting the trees first like the trees came first <laughs> i have a peach tree we cut this together uh last week there's another peach tree right here there's two apple trees so that's one apple tree that's another apple tree and then there's the grapevine now i'm not gonna tell y'all that this space don't be a whole mess in the summer because there's a lot of stuff in a small space but i harvest a lot of stuff out of this small space and this is my tiny little orchard area that grows peaches i have not yet gotten any any apples we all know that <laughs> and someone said you're gonna have to spray it i'm not gonna spray it <laughs> and if i never get an apple off of it i'll never get an apple off of it <laughs> <laughs> that tree did not look as bad as it did last year this year and so I'm just gonna keep going with it and see what happens and I know people are probably like you're never gonna get an apple and again if I never get an apple that'll be my problem <laughs> one of those spiders they everywhere y'all um, so down here we have oregano comfrey sage thyme the more comfrey oregano rosemary back here i'm gonna go ahead and harvest some of that this year i didn't harvest last year because i was trying to let it just kind of get its you know grow and there's a time down here too or it was i think it got shaded out there this was the time <laughs> oh, that was the time y'all but i'm gonna put some more time over here that's some rosemary um there's lavender down here um what else wormwood and someone said that wormwood is perennial but it'll take over so gonna see how that gonna see how we work that out this year um there's a little bit of basil down here that didn't get off to a great start in the first place and i'm sure it was shaded um some comfrey and some sage in the orchard area there's also rose bushes right there um, and then under where we cut these trees, there is a raspberry bush that I cut down already. And there's also strawberries down there. I did not get a lot of raspberries this year because I did not take care of that plant. It was very much in the way. <laughs> it's very much going to grow back again next year. Um, but it's okay. Um, right here is normally where the um, daisy is and an echinacea. But those things have kind of died out at this point. If they don't grow back, 
uh, the echinacea is definitely going to come back. But if that daisy doesn't come back this year, I won't be too upset about it. I'm going to probably make another garden bed right here. Um, and I'm not sure what I will plant. Maybe some more perennials. Um, and then I'll put a daisy over in the flower bed. So that that's my plan for this space. And then I'm going to put some more weed barrier here so I have my walk-in path. Okay, so eventually when I had built everything up and I wanted more space to grow, that's when I had started buying bags. I did not originally start out with this many bags. I got like one pack and then I enjoyed growing in them. It expanded my space. I was like, oh, I want more. And so now we're at a count of 60. And so some of the summer that's left are the peppers and they are still in bags. There are a few tomatoes left. These were volunteers and I think one, this one was a sucker. This is extending my growing season. Uh, so all of the summer peppers are still growing, still flourishing and I'm excited about that. They're gonna keep growing up until the last frost. Um, I could overwinter them. I don't do well with overwintering so I won't overwinter them, <laughs> but I could. Um, but yeah, so that's where we were with the bags. One thing I forgot to mention was before any of this was thought of, this was where all of my pots were. So the pots that you see over here, and I went ahead and harvested all of the mint yesterday. I told you I was gonna start harvesting my um, herbs so that maybe they'll grow back this year. Maybe they won't, but I'll have preserved the herbs. So this is all the mint. I did not preserve that one, I just cut it. It is the ginger mint and I do not like it. Um, but all of these pots, which had different things in them, they were all over here before I decided I'm just gonna make this into a bed. Um, and most of the pots are herbs. And so while this is shaded for a good portion of the day, they still grow well over here. Okay, so the last, I think, beds that I put in were the Vigo garden beds and they were gifted to me. Um, so these are Vigo garden beds. They were gifted to me. So this one I put in and then I put in this one over here. Prior to these beds being here, there were just bags. Uh, this was just a no dig bed. So I put this garden bed over top of the no dig bed and then filled it up. Um, also, there is now a code for Vigo Garden Beds, 10% off. They just gave it to me yesterday. So if you are interested in a Vigo Garden Bed, um, you can get 10% off and it's a specific bed. I'll post that link. But also, if you buy a different bed, you'll get the lights that come on the side of the bed for free. So I'll put all of that information down in the description box in case you're interested, you wanna look at it for next year. Um, when I originally started gardening, I did not have money to be buying this kind of stuff. And so I did what I could with what I had. So that is important for people to remember. You don't need the fancy garden beds. You don't need the blocks. You don't need any of that. You don't need the bags. All you need, honest truth, is some cardboard and some soil, and you can start growing. So while this is what my garden looks like now, uh, it's aesthetically pleasing to me. Um, if you want to garden, you don't need that, and you really don't even need the cardboard. You can start growing in the ground, get you some granulated fertilizer, and um, you know, and start growing. Like you don't need a lot of the stuff that I have out here. Um, it's just a place that I like to be, and I want it to be aesthetically pleasing. But that does not have to be the case for every garden. Get you, start growing y'all. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about how I did my trellising. I have, I think a total, I think I have a total of five cattle, cattle panels. And I cut them originally, but then I started thinking, no, I want really big uh, trellis spaces. So I have five. So this is, probably my first trellis, this one in the front. And you may not be able to tell, um, these, look at that, y'all. That's the tromboncino squash. Let me see if I can get the sun out of there. That's the tromboncino squash that I hope is growing. So right now, this was my first trellis. This is a second trellis right here. And I'm pretty sure I cut this one. This is growing the loofah right now, and they're growing really nicely. 
Um, some of them are starting to yellow and dry. I'm very sorry about the sun. I thought that I was gonna be able to get this done before the sun came up, but it's taking much longer than I thought. <laughs> so I'm gonna keep going. Sorry about the sun. So this, this is one cattle panel right here, and that's the other half of it. So these were my first two cattle panel. This one here, that one there, but it's one cattle panel. This one here was a part of my first group, and these over here were a part of my first group. So I originally started with two cattle panel, um, and then I added the other three. So the one that the loofah is growing on is one cattle panel, then this is a cattle panel I put up, and this is a cattle panel I put up. So the other thing to remember is you don't have to do it all at once. I did not do this all at once. What you see out here is over a period of three years. Um, the only thing I added new this year were the T post here. The ones that I had the Florida weave on, those are new this year. I added the, I do believe I added the weed barrier this year as well, gifted to me from Vivor. There'll be a link to that if you're interested. Um, before I put this down, I had cardboard. I did cardboard for two years and I just went to stores and was like, can I have cardboard boxes? And I found a store that was like, oh, there's a bunch in the back. You can come get them anytime you want to. And, and when the cardboard started breaking down, I would just go back, get more cardboard um, and put it down. So if you want walkways that are not grass and you don't want to buy rocks and you don't want to buy go find wood chips and all that stuff you can absolutely use cardboard that's what i used <laughs> so back to the garden tour a little bit <laughs> i harvested the lemon balm yesterday um i harvested a lot of the comfrey because i made comfrey tea last week i harvested the volunteer basil yesterday as well so if i'm lucky i'll get one more harvest off of that before the uh, frost comes in what else oh there's still peppers down this row and they're still growing well um so this whole row is still the peppers that were in the bags so i hope that you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to like share subscribe don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye, y'all.